There you are, there you are. Good morning, good morning. I am here on this gorgeous fall day in Grand Falls, Joplin to bring you joy, to bring you hope, to bring you encouragement through the Word of God. We have been at this for, get this, 89 weeks. 89 weeks trekking through the Psalms, uncovering God's character, uncovering His love for us, uncovering the human emotion because we see David, we see Solomon, we see so many different psalmists that wrote and contributed to the book of Psalms and they pour their heart out. This psalm here will not disappoint, but it is long, so I'm gonna get right to it. I wanna tell you that as I was making my Thanksgiving meal, as most of you were, I wanna let you know that I was reminded on the very first turkey that I had to roast, and I thought about, I don't know how to do this, no way, no how. I had, there was no YouTube, you guys, at that time, and I don't think if we had it, I don't think we had internet in our home yet, I don't know, I think we had that little, um, that wire that connects bandwidth or something. Anyway, I don't know anything about that. But I'm here to tell you, I had no help. I had not, my best friend was Korean and she she could hardly speak English. So we would get along through uh, our children and the food that she would make, none of it which was turkey, right? And so anyway, I'm making this turkey. I'm excited about it. I remember being exhausted that day. I just I think that's the one emotion, the one true uh, consistent thing about my life when the girls were little is that I was tired. I was tired. So I put this turkey in. I go get myself together, look decent, and have the girls look decent. We put the meal together, you know, corn out of a can, mashed potatoes out of a box. I didn't know anything. I was green as they come. So anyway, here we are. The turkey looks beautiful by some miracle, an act of God. It comes out of our oven, I place it, and lo and behold, there is something inside of this turkey. God help me, I don't know if it was myself or my husband who discovered it, but it's this yucky bag with all of the yuckiness inside the turkey that I didn't know I was supposed to take out. Yeah, the gizzard bag or, anyway, gross, okay? I want to tell you that there's a learning curve to everything. Everything we do in life, life is an adventure. It's about learning everything that we do in life, the experiences that we encounter. Everything is about learning and growing, maturing. Uh, I mean, that's certainly what the Word of God is about. That's certainly what it helps us because there's a lot of things in the world and just being in this um, in this place on earth in the United States that you've got to learn you've got to know kind of the rhythm of things a new job a new school You've got to learn and the, the rhythm of these different things and sometimes there, there is a learning curve and you will make mistakes but when it comes to spiritual matters the Word of God knows the Word of God takes us through this journey because God knows, God knows that there is a learning curve for us. We are learning and growing. It's called the sanctification journey, the sanctification process, which takes you from this person that is wrecked, this person that is broken, this person that is a mess, to a person that is becoming more and more like Jesus, a person that is becoming holy, for God is holy. So it, it is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And so we'll see that here in, in, the, in the Psalms where he is going through this journey emotionally and spiritually as he's crying out to God. And we'll see this roller coaster ride of a Psalm here. Go to Psalm 89. Psalm 89, if you have your Bible, please get it because that's always very helpful. But if you don't allow the words that I read to just renew your mind, allow them to pour into you, to wash your heart of bitterness, of any ugliness that's in there, and let's get right to it, because that's what the Word of God does. 
it washes us. It is like a mirror and it shows us and reveals things to us about the heart of the Father, yes, but also about our heart. I'm competing with the waterfall, so I hope you can hear me nice and clear. Psalm 89, I will sing of the Lord's unfailing love forever. Young and old will hear of your faithfulness. Your unfailing love will last forever. Your faithfulness is as enduring as the heavens. The Lord said, I have made a covenant with David, my chosen servant. I have sworn this oath to him. I will establish your descendants as kings forever. They will sit on the throne from now until eternity. All heaven will praise your great wonders, Lord. Myriads of angels will praise you from, uh, for your faithfulness. For who in all of heaven can compare with the Lord? What mightiest angel is anything like the Lord? The highest angelic power stand in awe of God. He has far more, he is far more awesome than all who surround his throne. O oh Lord of heaven's armies, where is there anyone as mighty as you, O oh Lord? Oh my goodness, you are entirely faithful. You rule the oceans, you subdue their storm-tossed waves, you crush the great sea monster, you scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours and the earth is yours. Everything in the world is yours. You created it all. You created North, South, Mount Tabor, Mount Hermon. Praise your name, powerful is your arm, strong is your hand. Your right hand is lifted in glorious strength. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Unfailing love and truth walk before you as attendants. Happy are those who hear joyful call to worship, for they will walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice all day long in your wonderful reputation. They exalt in your righteousness. You are the glorious strength. It pleases you to make us strong. Yes, our protection comes from the Lord and He, the Holy One of Israel, has given us our King. Long ago, you spoke in a vision to your faithful people. You said, I have raised up a warrior. I have selected him from the common people to be king. I have found my servant David. I have anointed him with my holy oil. I will steady him with my hand. With powerful arm, I will make him strong. His enemies will not defeat him, nor will the wicked overpower him. I will beat down his adversaries before him. My faithfulness and unfailing love will be with him, and by my authority, he will grow in power. I will extend his rule over the sea, his dominion over the rivers, and he will call out to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn son, the mightiest king on earth. I will love him and be kind to him forever. My covenant will be with him will never end. I will preserve an heir for him. His throne will be endless as the days of heaven. But if his descendants forsake my instructions and fail to obey my regulations, if they do not obey my decrees and fail to keep my commands, then I will punish their sin with a rod and their disobedience with beating. But I will never stop loving him nor fail to keep my promise to him. No, I will not break my covenant. I will not take back a single word I said. I have sworn an oath to David, and in my holiness I cannot lie. His dynasty will go on forever. His kingdom will endure as the sun. It will be as eternal as the moon, my faithful witness in the sky. But now you have rejected him and cast him off. You are angry with your anointed king. You have renounced your covenant with him and you have thrown his crown in the dust. You have broken down the walls protecting him and ruined every fort defending him. 
Everyone who comes along has robbed him. He has become a joke to his neighbors. You have strengthened his enemies and made them all rejoice. You have made his sword useless and refused to help him in battle. You have ended his splendor and overturned his throne. You have made him old before his time and publicly disgraced him. Oh Lord, how long will this go on? Will you hide yourself forever? How long will your anger burn like fire? Remember how short my life is, how empty and futile the human existence. No one can live forever. All will die. No one can escape the power of the grave. Lord, where is your unfailing love? You promised it to David with a faithful pledge. Consider, Lord, how your servants are disgraced. I carry in my heart the insults of so many people. Your enemies have mocked me, O Lord. They mock your anointed king wherever he goes. Praise the Lord forever. Amen and amen. Wowzers. This was a powerful psalm. Oh, I'm going to stick that right in there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This was a powerful psalm that can teach us a lot about the gospel, that can teach us a lot about God's faithful promises, and then can show us that God, again, is not afraid of the questions of those who seek Him and wrestle with questions in our own lives. We know the promises of God, and as we're walking to them and things happen as they often do, as people disappoint, as people hurt us, as people betray us, we can tend to say, God, where are you in this moment? But he has been there all along as he has promised David. But look at that promise. That promise was uh, very much about like this pact of you need to obey me. You need to follow my commands. He implores us to do that. A lot of times we expect God to just do. You know, it's as silly as me putting a turkey in the oven and saying, God, help me make this turkey, make it beautiful. And here you go and stick it in the oven and just expect that, you know, I, I, I don't, that I, that he would just make everything right that I didn't correct, that I didn't follow instructions. I didn't do certain things and just expect that this beautiful turkey is just going to be perfect and all those things will be taken care of. But you got to know that there's work involved. I needed to do some research. I needed to ask around. I needed to get advice, wisdom. I needed to follow instructions and read carefully. I needed the experience. That taught me never again have I made a turkey with gizzards and the heart and every uh, that bag i take it right out okay my turkeys are beautiful and they are delicious and tender but that came with experience that came with learning that came with a desire to want to do better a desire to please my family to do a great job on on something that i felt was important to those that i loved so you see how it, it, it's it's more about the, the journey it's about learning it's about seeking you know if if the pro if the Psalms I'm sorry the Psalms have taught us anything is that God is okay with us pouring out our heart our emotion our frustration and he will guide and he will lead us to the truth his heart is always for us his heart is always for you. He is not against you. He's pursuing you. He wants you to be at his table. He desires that you be at his table because at the table is not only where we break bread, we break the word of God. And in this communion with God, who is the word, the word became flesh and you have Holy Spirit, the new wine. When we have this communion with God, he reveals great things to us. And he is teaching us and guiding us and showing us. And that's where our heart, our, the posture of our heart, that's where our mind needs to be. Continually grow to be sanctified, to be holy like our King, to be like Jesus. Some of you don't even 
have this notion of understanding what coming to the table is or understanding what this relationship with God that you, a God that you can pour out a God that is not um, he's not intimidated by your past he's not intimidated by your questions who is this God you don't have a relationship with God right now perhaps because you have not come to Jesus you see Jesus is the only way the only way to God he died for your sins past future and present all of them are covered in his precious blood you must surrender to him and in that surrender there is repentance that means you change your mind I was going one way but now I am going another and this is where this encounter with Jesus is so beautiful and so powerful and your life no longer is your own you die in Christ but you know what he he was raised from the dead so you will also be raised from the dead meaning you have eternal life in him and then you have God the Father who becomes your daddy who becomes this God that you can speak to that wants to envelop you and surround you with his love um, I pray that you come to know this Jesus it's just believing it's just surrendering give him access to every part of your life give him permission he then will fill you up with Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit is a teacher a guide a great coach that will lead you to further truth as you go in this journey of sanctification as you grow and you learn in Christ I pray this was helpful to you I love you and I will see you at the table I want to rock ah, happy 